I am live. Hello, everybody. No, no, no. Okay, we're just working on some technical stuff. I have got two cameras in front of me. Hello, Instagram. Hello, everywhere else. So this is, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, this is my phone. My husband is sitting next to me making testing, noise. Testing, I'm testing that it's working. <laughs> so welcome to a new series for however long it lasts that I'm going to do at usually the first of each month, life circumstances allowing, on a specific topic or theme that we're going to then use throughout the month on my social media platforms. So this month is contribution. And it's, I'm actually pretty excited about it. So what you're basically gonna see throughout the month on specifically Instagram, and if you're not watching this on Instagram right now, like go over to my Instagram account. It's at Shannon O'Hara Douglas and follow me because there's gonna be a ton of inspirational content, sales, energy, facilitation on the theme of contribution. So this month, we're starting off this new sort of like social media theme uh, with contribution. And again, if you're joining on Facebook or Instagram, this is my phone you're seeing down here because I've got my I've got Instagram right in front of me. My husband didn't want to do this, but I said, just do it. It looks cute. Um, and if you are on Instagram watching this, you could also check it out on my YouTube, Shannon O'Hara or Facebook, because there is such a pretty, what do you call that? Like a lower third? What do you call that graphic? Never mind. Yeah, love it. Yeah. So, what is contribution? We live in a world. So, people do one thing, and then nature demonstrates this other thing. So, nature demonstrates this really harmonious expression and demonstration of what I would call gifting and receiving simultaneous gifting and simultaneous receiving, meaning that every organism in nature contributes to and receives from every other organism in nature without condition, without control, without judgment. Do we see that amongst people? So people demonstrate what we call give and take the transaction of society, essentially. <clears throat> And transaction isn't wrong. I love commerce. I love business. And I'm not talking about that kind of transaction. I'm talking about the kind of transaction of I gave you this, like I did the dishes. Now it's your turn to do the dishes. Or you gave this to me. Now what do I have to do for that? Um, which happens in this very um, dynamic scale in a lot of our worlds. And if you look at this for yourself right now, it's like, how much do you um, always feel suspicious when you're being given something or when there's a gift, you're like, what am I going to have to give in return? <clears throat> um, or maybe it's not even that subtle. Maybe it's, you're very clear about that, you know, and how often do you do the thing of, okay, well, I did this. Now you have to do this for me. And it might not even be spoken. It might not be even, you might not even do it out loud, but it's something that goes on in your own world. And that's a demonstration of transaction. So give and take. I give you this, now I'm going to take this. Or I'm taking this, now I've got to give you this. Which has a lot of sort of like sums and totals and tallies that go along with it, a lot of justifications, none of which nature does. So we as people lose this sense, we lose this, mm, the magic, like this miracle called contribution that's occurring for all of us all the time because we actually live in an abundant, infinite universe, but we don't think we do. <laughs> we think we are limited and that we live in the limited universe. There where we're not enough, that there's not enough. And that is just simply not true. It's like, does nature ever function from the point of view that it's not enough? <laughs> or does it continue to create itself? And so I was taught this stuff about contribution and the difference between gifting and receiving and give and take from my dad, Gary Douglas, who's the founder and creator of Access. He really taught me over years 
and would ask me a lot of questions when I would come to him in like with stuff about being, you know, resentful towards my husband or this person did this and, you know, this person was financially dishonest or, you know, whatever, like financial conflict or, you know, house chores or we see this occur in all sorts of different areas. And he would always ask me, he's like, so is this person a contribution? And I remember him starting to talk to me about that. And I kind of got it, but it was mostly like I wanted to hold on to my point of view about what was wrong and how I was right about that I lacked in some way and that therefore there was a problem. How many of you guys justify and hold on to that you lack in some way or that there is some lack and that you therefore are justified in what's wrong in having a problem or a conflict. Does nature do that? So where does this point of view and behavior about lack lead? It leads to all the limitations and all the lack that all of us experience in so much of our lives for better or worse. And what if I told you that like, you didn't actually have to lack and you didn't actually have to be limited. Is that even a reality for you? Or it's like, what are you making real and true? What are you making real and true that isn't? And what is contributing to you that you're not perceiving, let alone receiving? Because it doesn't match the way you think it should show up or you have a huge amount of expectations about if you receive, then I'll then you'll be obligated in some way. And all of that will you destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, povets, boys and beyonds. If you're sort of new to access and you just heard, heard me do that little gobbledygook speak thing, destroy and uncreate it, right, wrong, good, and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, povets, boys and beyonds. That's the access clearing statement <clears throat> and it is, does sound funny because it's a whole bunch of short speak. It's sort of like it's sort of like computer code, but it's like consciousness code where you don't necessarily have to understand it. And it doesn't it's like not like the normal language you're used to, but it's the delete button that clears all the energies and stuff. So. What is contribution? Contribution is the gift that you can be. And the gift that's being given if you will receive it. How many, how many gifts are you being given that you might not even acknowledge because it doesn't match your point of view about what a gift should be or what's okay for you to receive or, you know, it, it, it would make you too different, too much ease, too much, too much happiness. These are some of the things that we can tend to do. So one of the things that I've really gotten to experience that's something that I think is sort of like one of the magical ecstatic benefits of being alive in a body on the planet is <laughs> the experience of being a gift and receiving based on that gift. Now, how many of you guys believe that you're a gift versus believe that you're very wrong? <laughs> or very, 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 very wrong. It's like so many humanoids are kind of cursed and very heavily brainwashed to believe that like at your core, you are so bad. And then based on that core judgment, you essentially disconnect from the gifting and receiving of the infinite universe. When you be a gift, meaning you're not in judgment, <laughs> The key to being a gift is not judging you. When you be a gift, you become in line with or congruent with what I call the physics of consciousness. So when you be, you also perceive, know, and receive. Perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving is this molecular formation. It's these four elements of consciousness that always go together. It's like CO2, but it's like perceiving, knowing. It's like CO2 is oxygen and uh, oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen and carbon. carbon and oxygen. CO2 is carbon and oxygen, right? That's a molecule that makes water. And the molecule that makes consciousness is perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. So they all go together. 
when you be more, you also receive more, know more, perceive more. And so, so many of us suffer from basically like being wrong or being judgmental, being in judgment of ourselves first and foremost. And as soon as you lose being, you lose perceiving, you lose knowing and you lose receiving, which is then why life feels so difficult to get what you sort of want in life. But there's this universal truth that's very real is that you ask and you shall receive. The universe is, the consciousness of the universe is set up to deliver your point of view. Is your point of view a contributive point of view or is your point of view the wrongness of you? And so as soon as you're in the wrongness of you, you're no longer a gift, you're a curse. And then you lose all receiving. You lose all connection to what is being gifted, what can support and what wants to gift and support to you. So the magic, you know, here is being aware of what are your points of view about you? What are your judgments about you? Do those judgments create a more abundant space and place in the world? Or do those points of view and judgments about you limit And so what I would do over the years is I'd go to my dad, Gary Douglas, with like a problem or a complaint. And I'd be like, this is going on. And he'd go, OK, so if you were an infinite being, would this be an issue? And a lot of times what he helped me see was that I was creating a lot of problems with money and my relationships. Um, that's pretty much it. In money with money and in my relationships, I was creating a lot of problems because I fundamentally didn't believe that there was more that there was more money or that there was an infinite source and that I was limited in some way and that there was a lack in some way. There wasn't enough, which simply just isn't true. It isn't true in nature. It isn't true amongst people. There's always more possibility. There's always more choice. There's always more energy, literally. This isn't just airy fairy woo woo. Like this is scientifically proven. Like this is quantum physics. Like there's always more energy. There is no end to energy. And so question by question, bit by bit, choice by choice, I started seeing that I was choosing to function and believe that I was limited. And to get over the problem, I just had to push that point of view aside and be like, okay, so if I was an infinite being, how would I actually handle this? And wow, how much that got me over the limitation and the problem. And then it gave the universe enough space to actually be able to contribute to me because when I was having this point of view that I was limited in some way or that there was a lack in some way, I was inputting that point of view essentially like into the matrix. I was like, limitation. So then the universe would just reflect back to me, limitation. So that's all I could see. But when I would get over that point of view and ask a question, okay, so if I was being an infinite being, if infinite possibility was real, like, then what? How would that change the situation? That question then was the key that would unlock a new possibility that would allow the universe to show me that different possibility. And after using that question enough and after getting over my points of view enough and being really interested in having a different point of view and a different reality, I started to be gifted in this way that I had no reference point for, but that was so major. And I started actually becoming able to, I sort of like became able to actually be contributed to. Prior to that, I had so many points of view that anything that didn't match my point of view couldn't and wouldn't contribute to me. So me changing my point of view allowed me to receive. And through that receiving, through that greater receiving, I simultaneously got to be more of a gift in my own life. I started being the gift that receives, not the gift that's right, not the gift that's wrong, not the gift that's, you know, rejecting, but the gift that receives. And so many of us are taught that like receiving is, you know, dangerous or whatever, you know, what comes up for you when I say receiving. And some of that's true. Like receiving is unconditional. And I really learned 
what contribution was and how to receive from nature. And I looked at that trees receive everything. They'll receive the rain, the sun, the season changes, but they'll also receive poison and having the earth that they're rooted in being, you know, a toxic wasteland and they'll receive being cut down and they'll receive being burned. And they just don't take a point of view. And I thought, well, if a tree is like that, what am I doing? Like, what am I making real and true that makes me like not that, not that allowing? And I realized that I had this point of view that like receiving was dangerous or that there could be a problem. And as soon as I really looked at, okay, so like, is there a problem or are there always just other possibilities? Is this just a change? You know, I remember at one point my dad asked, he said like, when a tree is cut down, does the tree die? Or is it just a change in energy? And that was really profound for me because I realized how much I was blocking the change in energy. And when you're blocking or controlling, or judging, being right, you're not in the flow, you're not functioning in the infinite symphony of consciousness. You're like this density that doesn't change, doesn't perceive, doesn't receive, doesn't be, and that cannot be contributed to. So you really have to look at your points of view and make a different choice. What is being contributed to you? that you don't acknowledge and what gift can consciousness be that you must acknowledge. And so the more I started to be a gift, like come out of judgment of me, that was huge. Like I, I still have to come out of judgment of me. Like it's not a foregone conclusion. It's a, it's a choice. It's a choice by choice by choice. It's like, I can be a gift or I can be wrong. And I have enough sort of like track under my, choices to know that like being a gift usually works out a million times better and it feels a million times better than being wrong. So I force myself to come into judgment and I am grateful and I submit to the gift of being, which is not something that a lot of us are taught. And it's definitely not something that many people are choosing. <laughs> so there's not a lot of examples of it and it's different. So it feels weird. And the more I was willing to be a gift, the more I started noticing that I was receiving and being contributed to in ways that like, I couldn't even really um, like, uh, how do you put it? Um, quantify, There were it wasn't quantifiable. There was just this overall sense of yes, abundance, ease, joy, glory, possibility, yes. Instead of this like impervious, impossible limitation that I could never overcome. And the more I chose to be the gift, the more I started noticing that my receiving was increasing. And receiving doesn't, receiving is this interesting phenomenon where it doesn't just flow to you. Receiving isn't just about you getting, right? Receiving is this multi-directional experience where you are a gift, you receive, but in that receiving, you also gift. And so I started noticing that my bank account and my business was really increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. And it was like occurring in this very nonlinear, very non-logical way. And I knew it was the gift and the contribution from consciousness. And I started to have so much money, may all of you have this problem one day, that I didn't really know what to do with the money. And so I started asking, myself because everyone was like you know everyone has this point of view about like you should invest your money or you should do this certain thing with it or you should do it like everyone has a point of view about what you should do with your money so I you know was susceptible to that and I was like what should I do with my money like what should I do with this money and you know people were like you should invest it and, da, 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 da. and I was like well what do I want to invest it in and I was like looking at the stock market and I was like I don't believe in any of this shit like I don't want to invest in like fucking chemical companies or like technology like yes okay like yeah is investing smart if you like want to make money on the smart market yes but is that where my joy is is that where is that where I was sensing the greatest contribution to the expansion of my life uh, no and I was like well what do I truly want to invest in in the world and I knew from a very young age that it was consciousness I wanted to be what it took do what it took and really put my money where my mouth was so just by luck Gary Douglas my dad, founder of Access, had sort of been envisioning and starting to put into motion this project called Elugar, 
um, which is in English, The Place, which is the title of a book that he wrote, which by the way, if you're interested in this contribution thing, check it out, the book, The Place. And so at first it was like this idea of like building a, you know, like a hotel resort uh, place in Costa Rica. And I went, well, I've got some new money, you know, and access has given me my life and access has been such an incredible gift. And, you know, I really want to see another possibility on the planet and in the world. So why don't I gift some of my money, gift some of this money to the Elugar project. And this was before it was formalized or there was a prop, there was even land, da, 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 da. And so I did that without really expectation, just because I could, and it was sort of like my way of honoring access and my dad and everything that had saved my life. And I gave the money and I, at this point, I can't even remember what, how much it was. Cause this was maybe seven, six years ago. It's like maybe like $30,000 or $35,000. And at that point for me, that was huge. Like that was like a lot of money for me. And may $35,000 not be a lot of money for you. <laughs> and I, and I gifted the money and I sort of forgot about it. Like I didn't really keep track of it. It wasn't something I was expecting to get a return from. It was just a gift. And then this thing occurred where like the next year, like my business just exploded. Like I, and it was the, that year was the first year I went over a million um, dollars in earnings. And I went, that was, and it was a huge leap. That wasn't just a 50% increase in my business. That was like a 70% increase in my business. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, cause I wasn't working harder. I couldn't really figure out where it came from. And then I remembered, I gifted that money to Elu Gahar. And I was like, wait a second, did Elugar just totally start contributing to me? And it did. And by the way, it's difficult to sort of understand what I mean when I say Elugar, because like, I don't mean like the property in Costa Rica. I sort of more mean like the energy, space, consciousness, magic, miracle, mystery, and possibility that you could learn a lot more about if you read the book, The Place. And so basically being willing to gift that money without expectation of return for me led to this incredible contribution that I couldn't, you could, there is no way that you can linearize, linearize that, linearize, <laughs> linearize, linearize that or uh, compute it or, you know, bookkeep it. You can't put that on a ledger. There is no mathematical equation for gifting and receiving. So Elergar really was the first, my real first, first foot in the door for what gifting was and what then receiving contribution could be without expectation, without quantification, without control. And just year after year after year, my the revenue that's come in from my consciousness facilitation business just has been off the charts for me. And the change that it creates in the universe and the sense of like accomplishment that I'm having is massive. And I started realizing like, I really care about this planet. Like I love life and I love nature and the trees taught me really truly what being and receiving is. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's some earth changes going on right now. And I was like, okay, I learned a long time ago that having a point of view doesn't work. Questions work. So what can I be that would be a contribution to expanding and instituting the world I want to live in? And I started seeing these, you know, places where I could, for me personally, I could contribute money to people like, for example, who are doing reforestation, uh, preservation, who have rhinoceros sanctuaries, who are doing orangutan sanctuaries, who are replanting the coral reefs, um, et cetera. Like these people that are in the world, on the ground, doing the work. And I thought, you know what? I live my life in a very different way. I'm not probably I'm not going to be the one doing that, but how can I contribute to the people who are doing what I believe in in the world? So that's contributing to El Ugar, Forest for Futures, Actions for Futures, contributing to consciousness. And in this gift that I receive from getting to be me, I get to then be a gift that can contribute. It's like, what is it that you actually can contribute that no one has ever acknowledged in you? What if you are this incredible gift? And I strongly believe that there is a massive deficit 
of self-acknowledgement going on in the world. It's like humanoids walk around basically cursed to think you're just like this wrongness walking rather than this strongness and this gift for being. And what if you changed your life and prioritized being a gift, even if it hurt, even if you didn't have any evidence that you were a gift, you know, even if you could find a million reasons and justifications and tons of evidence about what's wrong with you, what if you looked that aggressively for all the evidence that proved that you were a gift? And in so being a gift, you are a contribution. Your being is a contribution. And I wish that someone had been grateful for you all your life so that you knew that your presence on this planet is valuable. So what gift of <laughs> caring about yourself can you be today <laughs> that will allows you to receive some of the gift that you be? What would it take for the gift to win out over the wrongness? And what would it take for contribution to be an allowable commodity on earth rather than the need that runs so rampant on our planet? So I look forward to this next month of contribution content that I hope a lot of you guys check out on my Instagram account. I guess it'll be on my Facebook account. I actually yeah. don't know if it goes there. Um, we've got some fun stuff for you. And then in the following months, we're going to do other themes like sex and relationship. Um, in October, we're probably going to do like a whole, you know, a theme on Halloween and talk to entities. Maybe I haven't quite decided about that. Um, creation is going to be a whole theme for a whole month. So um, love you guys. Bye.